Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Ben, and this is going to be the third video in our Walker Random Level Generation series. Let's get started. In the last video, we left off with this, where our levels were randomly generated, but there's no player, there's no way to interact with these levels. What I'd like to have by the end of this video is this right here, where we can generate a level, have a player move around in this level, and find an end point or like an exit door in the level as well. So let's see if I can find one here. There we go. And when we go, it takes us to a new level like this. And the exit is the farthest, is located in the farthest room from where the player started. So that's kind of the, the logic behind what we're going to do here. Okay, let's get started. First, we need to create our player character. So I'm going to create a new scene and I'm going to select a kinematic body. We'll call this player. We'll attach a sprite. And we'll just give this sprite the default icon. Default Godot icon. But we're going to, I think we're going to scale this down so that it's smaller. So come into your transform scale it down. There we go. Okay, we can save this. This player will need to give it a collision shape. And we'll use a rectangle shape. Actually, for this, I want to use a circle shape just to keep things simple. The focus here isn't on Use pixel snap. The focus here isn't on the player character. It's on the level generation. You'll probably want to do your own player character. We'll attach a script to the player here and we'll basically just do a really simple movement through a physics process. We get the action strength, UI right. Minus input dot get action strength. UI left. Let's maximize this so we can see it easier. I'm going to copy paste that line. We'll make this our Y input. And we'll do down. And we'll do move and slide vector two x input comma y input times 100 and move and slide already applies delta so we don't have to apply delta underscore here okay come back into our world so now in our world we actually need to create this player and what we'll do is we'll have our walker. After we walk through the steps for our walker, we'll create the player in at the very first step that the walker takes. So we'll say var player equals player dot instance. So we need to get access to our player here. So we'll do a preload up here. Pre, let's see. Player equals preload. And we need to preload our player scene. There we go. And we can instance the player. And we can add a child player. And then we'll set the player's position equal to map dot front times 32. So we have to multiply by 32 because that's our grid size. And we're just getting the front because uh, our map contains the different vector locations for each step that we've taken, right? That's what map contains. So we're getting the very first one in the map, which is the first step we take, and we're putting the player at that position. So if we run the game now, we should see the player, and the first position is always actually the very center of the game. 
very center of the view here. And that works, good. Now we need to set up collisions in our tile set. So we'll come into our tile set here. And this is the most annoying part because I don't like the way collisions are set up, but we only have to do this once. So we're gonna come through and we're gonna set a collider for each of these right here. Okay, I've set up a collision shape for each of those now. And when we run the game, we should be able to collide with the edges with our player. So now our player can move around in this space inside of the different levels that we generate. Now the next step is going to be creating our exit location. And so we're going to create a new scene for this too. Create a new scene. We're going to make this an area 2D. That way we can detect when the player has overlapped our exit. Exit door. We'll attach a simple texture rec to this, or a color rec actually. And what's our snap set to? Pixel snap, configure snap, okay. And we'll attach a collision shape. Set our X tints to 16 and 16. Put it right in the center there. Save the scene as exit door. Attach a new script. Click on exit door, click on node, come to signals, and we'll do body entered. We'll connect, we'll connect our body entered script here so when the player enters this exit door, we can leave this level. So we'll emit our own little signal here. We'll make a signal. There we go. We can save that. And now our exit door should be good as well. We just need to place it inside of the world. Now we could place this in the last room that was generated. So let's look at what that would look like. Let's get our exit door. So inside of our walker, we actually need to store the rooms that we create. So our rooms equals empty array. So we can store the rooms in here. And we'll actually change this create room to place room. And we'll need to refactor that up here. So this says place room. And once again, up here, so this is place room. And we'll create a new function that will create uh, a room. And this function will take a position and a size. And we'll just return a dictionary that is position equals position and size equals size. So this dictionary will just contain our room information. So it'll contain a position and a size. And whenever we place a room, we actually want to create that room. We'll do rooms.append create room position size. So now whenever we place a room, it will actually append that room data information to our rooms array here. And we can use that information to get, uh, inf get different rooms. So now back at our world here, we can say equals 
walker.rooms.back.position. So this will get the last room in the list of rooms and get its position and create our exit there. Once we do that, we want to connect its signal. So door.connect leaving level self. We'll call a function here. So we're going to make a function, function called reload level. And we'll just call git tree dash reload or dot reload current scene. And we can actually call this function down here as well. Okay. Reload level. It says door does not exist. I need to make sure that this says exit. Now when we run the game, it should generate. Well, that's not working, is it? So what's happening here is the door is the exit is being created inside of this black area and this area is a body which means it's it's triggering our overlap our body uh entered signal here so we need to make sure that our exit door is not created outside of the level which wouldn't make sense anyways it has to be inside of the level so if it's being created outside of the level that means there's something going wrong when we're actually placing the door so if we come into our world here, you can see that we're creating, we're placing the door at the room's position, but we need to multiply this by 32, which is our grid size once again, in the same way that we did it for the player. Let's try this again. And there we go. Now it's working accurately. Our player can go to the door and leave the level. The problem now is that sometimes the last room that is created is right next to the player. In fact, it looks like we even had one level there where the door was basically created on the player because that was the last room. And that can happen. So the solution to this problem is well, different, different games do different solutions. Nuclear Throne, they generated the door where the last enemy was. However, we're going to try something different. We're going to create a new function inside of our walker script here that will allow us to get an end room. What this function will do is loop through every single room and find the room that is the farthest from the very start position. We'll start by getting the very first room in the list of rooms. We'll get the very first step that we take, which is our starting position. Then we'll loop through every single room and we'll say if starting position dot distance to, let's make this larger here so we can see this more easily. room position is greater than starting position dot distance to end room position end room equals starting room or equals room return end room so it just checks the distance between our current end room that we've saved in this variable and the current room and if this room is farther away from the starting position than this room then we set our new end room we basically update it we say this room is actually farther away than this one and so then we update it and then after looping through all the rooms we return the end room this allows us to easily get our end room. So we can say exit position equals walker dot get end room dot position 
times 32. That should always make sure that we get the farthest room from the very center of the game. And you can see as I press space, is generating the exit in the farthest room. We're getting some that are touching the edges of the room. So how do we fix this? Well, the easy way to fix this, there might be a better way to fix this, but an easy way is to decrease the size of the collision box on our room. That way, when it's touching the edge right here, it doesn't actually collide with the edge of the level. And the last thing we're going to do here is it's really easy to solve this maze, right? When you can see the entire maze. It doesn't make it a very difficult game. So the last thing we're going to do is create a new camera on our player. We'll just attach a camera here. Camera 2D to the player. And that is very, very, very um, big. So we're going to come into our scene or project, project settings, window display. We'll do a 640 by 320, and then we'll do a test width of 1280 by 720. Actually, let's do even smaller. Let's do 360 by 180. And we'll make this camera current. And there we go. Actually, that's closer than I wanted. I actually like the other one. It just didn't seem to update accurately. Which is interesting that it doesn't update right away. But this is... I don't know. Let's see, I made this camera current. Do I have a camera in this world? What's going on here? It's like we... It's like the camera's not... Ah, project settings. Silly me, I forgot we need to set our mode to 2D. Our aspect to keep for now. We'll set this back to 360 by 180. Accidentally duplicated it. That's interesting. Hmm, you have to set current equal to true. I must have typed in my numbers wrong. This really should be a lot easier than I'm making it. 360 by 180, 1280 by 720. It's 320 by 180. That's what I'm doing wrong. 320 by 180. There we go. And now we have a working level. Now what if you wanted to generate enemies? Well, you have a list of rooms, right? our exit you have a list of rooms that you can use so inside of your world here you could get your rooms walker.rooms and then you could loop through those rooms and generate an enemy in each room or generate a couple enemies depending on the size because you have access to the room size as well so that's how i would go about generating enemies in the room rooms uh we'll kind of see how this video does this is the end of the video, by the way. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. But I, I don't know if I'm going to continue this series. The second video didn't do very well. So we'll kind of see how this video does and kind of judge it from there. I would like to explore other types of level generation, potentially. And I have some other ideas for kind of tutorial content that's different from what I normally do. So I want to experiment with that a little bit too. So, but we'll kind of watch. We'll see how well this video does. If it does super well, then maybe I'll do some more. Uh, if it does about like the second one, or maybe even about like the first one, then I probably won't continue this series. I'll probably be done for this series for now. But I hope you enjoyed what we did do and had fun and learned something. And I will talk to you all later.